Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Collectors. This is sort of a part two um, to the KA 2000A which I got from England in the original box. Looked like it had never been used and I've just been getting into it a bit and here's a few things. This face but I have it off because it's so shiny I can hardly even hold in front of the camera without sunglasses on. Um, you need to take the faceplate off to get at the tone controls and uh, just tell you a couple of things okay I believe this was a new unit and it failed very shortly um, after it was new probably in the warranty period and it was sent back that's what I think's happened with this one being in the stereo business a few years ago that used to happen there'd be one that would be returned and rather than repair it or get sending it back to the factory whatever reason it just got lost put in a corner stuff piled on top of it whatever <laughs> anyway here's the point I want to make there is just so little wear if any on this and it's so clean and shiny inside I mean I didn't dust it that's what it looked like um, I have been replacing some parts in it. I'll tell you about that. Um, when I tested it, yes, I got sound. What I found is the right channel of the phono was garbled. And that was actually, tra this is the phono board here. Uh, two C458s, the famous crackling transistors. And it just proves a point. Even if the amp wasn't used for 40 or 50 years, those transistors failed very early in the lifespan of the amplifier. They're the worst transistor ever made, the C458. Let me show you some of the stuff I've changed in here. So, I changed the rectifier capacitors. Um, it's like a little gimmick they made with the rectifier and capacitor and the full wave rectifier. These are sort of oozing. They're oil-filled caps. I think they're actually toxic, too. Um... I noticed the coupling caps for the speakers, they were quite a bit of leakage when I tested the caps, more than acceptable. And this one in the power supply, this is actually the filter that goes to the phono section. And it's a 220 microfarad, it was testing around 70 microfarad. That wasn't doing too good. And there are a few little leakers. Um, some of these oil filled caps, this is everything I've replaced so far in it. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, and the phono stage, once I got it working, I noticed it was very noisy. And you see these kind of little tiny wire round resistors? Um, these things are just inferior. And four of the ten or so resistors on the equalization board are these. And, uh... I think they were substituted at the factory. One's a 560K and one's a 15K in each channel. And uh, it's in the collector circuit of the first transistor. And so you kind of get a background like that, even with new transistors. So I replaced those. So I'm basically recapping it. I randomly tested some and they were way off. So I've recapped the tone control board, the phono board, the power supply. I'm just going to turn it around so you can see it. Got a lot of stuff out here. I can give you a peek. So down in here, put some capacitors under the board. Well, under the chassis, there's room. You can see the new speaker coupling caps, the new Sobel network caps. Uh, wherever there was an oil field, replace that. But if you look at the metal on this thing, it's just incredibly nice. You know, like I say, this was dropped in the box shortly after it was put in service and forgotten about. So, um, just, it proves the point though. Um, this could have been in somebody's stereo system and used for years. And it got crackly and noisy and needed recapping. Or just been sitting in the box and it needs recapping. But it will work really nicely when it's done. These are just amazing little powerhouses. Anyway, thanks for watching and listening.